the future of transportation. So I talked about generation. Let me talk a little bit about usage. Now, recently, the California Air Resources Board approved the bill, uh, the law, that by 2025, 15% of uh, new cars sold in California have to be zero emissions vehicles by 2025, which means that by 20, uh, 2018, 1.4 million zero energy vehicles will be going around California, okay? Now, zero emissions means basically electric or hydrogen. Again, for reasons that, you know, I don't want to expand on right now, I believe that electric vehicles will win, period, okay? Um, and guess what? This is only 13 years away. 13 years away. Now, are we going to make it? Let me talk a little bit about EVs. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen the Tesla Roadster. It uh, goes 240 miles, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. It's a thing of beauty. Uh, you can fill it up for five bucks or charge it up for five bucks. Now, minor detail, it's $100,000. <laughs> uh, but cool factor, priceless. Um, so let me talk a little bit about that. Um, so who can afford an electric vehicle? And, and let me take you back a little bit again, but this time I want to take you back to New York City. 1900 Easter in down Fifth Avenue. If you look at this picture, it's a little bit pixelated, but if you look at it, it's all basically horses, horse carriages. There is one car in this picture. This is 1900 Fifth Avenue, New York. Let me show you 19, 1913. Same street, 13 years later. Where is the horse? Okay, 13 years, New York, Fifth Avenue, if these two pictures are to be trusted, went from all horse to all cars. So it could happen in 13 years, right? It's happened before. Who uses digital cameras, by the way? Anyone? Digital cameras? Come on, you can say it. Yeah, okay, everyone. Who uses film cameras today? Wow, that's impressive. One, two, three, one percent. That's cool. Who used, who used digital cameras 10 years ago? See? In 10 years, we went from all film to all digital. And there are many, many, many uh, things that basically go from zero to 100 in about 10 years. Um, so the reason that horses, that cars beat horses, and that digital cameras beat uh, film, is that these technologies were disruptive. And I want to make a pause just to talk about what this means. Disruptive. Disruptive means that it's just a matter of time before these technologies take over the world, just like digital cameras just like uh, cars, just like solar PV. They keep improving quality year after year and decreasing costs. And the, the, the curve is like this, okay? The, 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 the improvement is so fast in quality and efficiency and, and the cost cutting that at some point the market just flips, okay? There is nothing that the incumbents can do to beat it. Okay, they do use fear, uncertainty, and doubt, okay? But, but that's just to extend their, their uh, money-made cash machine for a little while. But their technology, there's nothing that they can do. Or what they say, resistance is futile, okay? It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. So the question is, is the electric vehicle disruptive? And if it is, how long is it going to take? before it takes over the world. Now, I'll give you five reasons why it's disruptive. 
why the internal combustion engine, the gasoline engine, cannot compete, right? Reason number one, the electric motor is at least five times more energy efficient. So your car turns 15, maybe 20% of the gasoline, uh, ener the energy in the gasoline into actual mechanical power. Whereas the electric motor turns up to 90%, maybe more. And there's nothing that an that, that internal combustion engine uh, folks can do. There's a minor detail called thermodynamics, the laws of thermodynamics, which basically cap the possible efficiency of internal combustion engines. Two, electric vehicles are cheaper to fuel. Now, the Tesla's expensive, but you can fill it up for five bucks. How much did you pay for your SUV last time you checked in? 50, 60? That's 10 times what, what the Tesla costs to charge up. You can't compete with that. Now, not only that, but the electric vehicle has 80 plus 90% uh, fewer parts than the internal combustion engine, which means, of course, five times, 10 times cheaper to maintain, right? It costs two cents per mile to use an electric vehicle. It costs 10, maybe more cents to uh, run a, car, a gasoline car. Put all of these reasons together, EVs are disruptive. But wait, there's more. Torque, right? The EV actually is way, way, way more powerful than the internal combustion engine. They have instant torque. That's why it can go. Uh, Tesla's new SUV, they announced it. It's going to have the performance of a Porsche 911 Carrera, okay? That's because of the electric motor. It has instant uh, uh, torque, which means that the power is just, you know, you don't have to go see the blue line first, second. You don't have to do that with an electric vehicle. Wireless charging. Take that, General Motors. Wireless charging. Try that with your gasoline vehicle. Now, induction, induction power transfer is not a new technology. You know that. And it was invented more than 100 years ago by Nikola Tesla, the original Tesla, right? Uh, wireless charging. Here's what it means. It means that electric buses can go around the city and every time they stop to pick up passengers, they can charge up. Think about that. That technology already exists, okay? Take that internal combustion engine. Right? So for these reasons and more, the electric vehicle is disruptive. We still, of course, have the minor detail that the batteries are expensive, right? So how long is this transition going to take? How long before batteries actually drop in price? So I've done some numbers and looked at other industries, and I think that by the time electric vehicles uh, the payback, quote unquote, is three to five years relative to internal combustion engine, meaning, yes, it's higher capital cost, but maintenance and operations are actually much lower, five to 10 times cheaper. When you do a payback curve, once it's within three years to five years, basically that's when the mass migration is going to start. For that to happen, the batteries, the total cost of electricity storage, the batteries in the car, has to be somewhere around $300, $350, okay? Uh, now, when electric battery costs is about $100 per kilowatt hour, it's all over. Because by then, it's going to be actually cheaper to buy an electric vehicle than it will be to buy a gasoline car. 
and of course, cheaper to maintain and all, right? So when we get to 100, it's game over. Basically, we'll make the transition like we did from film to digital cameras. According to the US Department of Energy, 90% is gonna happen by 2030. Basically, that is the $100 uh, per kilowatt hour battery capital cost by 2030. $333 by 2016. So according to this, the mass migration is going to start around 2016. Not 2020, not 2030. It'll be over by 2030 if this is to be believed. And in fact, this assumes no breakthroughs. This assumes basically uh, that we're gonna keep investing and improving, but no major breakthroughs. And in fact, a lot of people are working on breakthroughs. A lot of people are working on breakthroughs. Uh, recently, this company announced $125 a kilowatt hour. Now, is it gonna happen this year or next year? Probably not, but a lot of companies are working on making this happen. So in fact, breakthroughs could happen sooner than the market anticipates, which means that it's gonna happen at Tesla itself. Now, 100K is not, is not doable, but 57? So they're gonna launch that car this year, $57,000. China has announced, BYD, that they're going to launch their BYD E6 with a range of 190 miles. Price, $35,000. Now, your average American car costs $28,000. Think about that. So a lot of competition, basically everyone, almost every car company, now has announced that they have electric vehicles which is intensifying competition, which means costs are going down, which means innovation is going up, okay? Tesla already announced a $30,000 SUV. Already. And they said that the technology is more scalable than they anticipated, which means that this could happen even faster. Now, I'll give you the conclusion. If electricity storage cost curve trends persist, not even with a breakthrough. This is what's going to happen. The mass migration from the gasoline vehicle to the electric vehicle is gonna start happening 2016. There are gonna be two to three million electric vehicles on California roads by 2025. Two to three million. Okay, are you ready for that? 90% plus of new cars sold in America are going to be electric by 2030. So we're gonna go full on electric by 2030. If current trends persist, okay? And oil will be obsolete by 2030. We won't run out, but it'll be obsolete, basically like salt or cinnamon. <clears throat> 